أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر وذكر الله كثيرا ولما رأى المؤمنون الأحزاب قالوا هذا ما وعدنا الله ورسوله قالوا هذا ما وعدنا الله ورسوله وصدق الله ورسوله وما زادهم إلا إيمانا وتسليما من المؤمنين رجال صدقوا ما عاهدوا الله عليه فمنهم من قضى نحبه ومنهم من ينتظر وما بدلوا تبديلا ليجزي الله الصادقين بصدقهم ويعذب المنافقين إن شاء أو يتوب عليهم إن الله كان غفورا رحيما ورد الله الذين كفروا بغيظهم لم ينالوا خيرا وكفى الله المؤمنين القتال وكان الله قويا عزيزا وأنزل الذين ظاهروهم من أهل الكتاب من صياصيهم وقذف في قلوبهم الرعب فريقا تقتلون وتأسرون فريقا وأورثكم أرضهم وديارهم وأموالهم وأرضا لم تطؤوها وكان الله على كل شيء بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وصلى الله وسلم على عباده الذين اصطفى اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع ومن عين لا تدمع ومن قلب لا يخشع ومن بطن لا يشبع ومن دعاء لا يسمع we commence by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sending blessings and salutations upon the masterpiece Muhammad ibn Abdullah al-Hashimi al-Qurashi. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him and all his household, starting with his wives, his offspring, and all his companions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them. And may he bless all those who have struggled and strived to preserve the deen and to convey it in such a way that today it has come to us. And may Allah bless us all. Amen. Also at the very outset, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us in such a way that he makes us from amongst those who can follow the candle through and pass it on to our children so that they can be rightly guided as well by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam. Firstly, I'm very happy to be here in the, the beautiful country of Mauritius. It's the first time I have come here. And really, it's a trip that's long overdue. And although it will be short, but by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I ask him to make it beneficial 
for all of us and to make it a means of our entry into Jannah by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being happy with us and making us from amongst those who love one another solely for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This evening's topic is a very interesting one. Help me get out of my mess. So we need to know every one of us is sometimes in some form of difficulty. We feel sometimes that we are in a mess and we feel sometimes a great difficulty. What is the mess we are in? Everyone has different problems. Some people have a problem where they've lost a loved one and death has taken place as it always does unexpectedly and therefore they find themselves in turbulence in what they may term as a mess. Is it a mess? That's a question. Then you have others who ask for trouble themselves. They ask for trouble themselves. You know, as I came into Mauritius, one of the brothers told me that, you know, here the people are very light-hearted and they love your humor, you know. So I said, well, if that's the case, perhaps we can flavor it a little bit more with it. So let me get cracking, mashallah. You know, people don't like to listen. Sometimes you have parents warning us and we don't like to listen to their advice. Then we get into a mess, but it was us to blame because you were told. Didn't I tell you? The answer is yes. You told me, but you know what? I didn't like to listen. It reminds me of a man in one of the Indian villages. He wanted to go to the city. Now, when you go to the city, there are very sharp, shrewd people in the city who are busy watching and waiting for foreigners who don't know what's going on in order to make money from them. Or sometimes people who look like they come from the village in order to con them out of their money. Like back at home in Zimbabwe, sometimes what they do, they stand outside the shop in a dust coat, you know where, they, where there is window shopping. They stand outside the shop in a dust coat and they say, uh, which one do you want? So an unsuspecting person says, I want this one. They say, don't worry, I get it for you at discount. It says $29.99, I will get it for you for $20.99. Oh, $19.99, just give me $20. You give them $20, they are gone. They never ever come back. You walk into the shop, what happens? They say, but who did you give the money to? To one of your own people. It was your fault. Why didn't you listen? You need to walk in and buy it properly. When you are asking for something that is too good to be true, sometimes it's your fault. Do you know? Sometimes there is a business deal. They tell you, come and join here with us. And you know what we'll do? We'll multiply your money in five days. Wallahi, if that was the case, that same man would not be sitting in front of you. Why must he multiply your money? Let him multiply his own money. But people don't understand. They come and they tell everyone, look, you can multiply your money. It's your fault. It was too good to be true. Now you're in the mess. May Allah protect us from getting into the mess on our own. So the story I was telling you, this man from the village decides I'm going to the city. They warned him and told him, you know, if you are going to go to the city, there are many shrewd people there. Take company, go with someone, you know. Inna shaytana ma'al wahid wa huwa min al abad. Shaytan is closer when you are traveling alone to you because then there is no one watching you. Your iman will block you from doing something wrong. But if you drop your guard for a moment, you might fall into the trap. Whereas when you are two or three traveling together, there is a less likelihood of you falling into a mess. May Allah protect us. So this man says, no, I'll go on my own. So what? You think I'm a foolish? I can rob them. Who are they to rob me? I will rob them. So they left him. He went. He arrived in the city. First time in his life, he saw a building 20 stories. Wow. Looking up. One, two, three, four, five. Six, he's counting. So one con artist saw that this man is from the village. He's counting. See, he said, hey, what are you doing? The man says, I am here looking. He says, what, you think looking is free? You think to look is free? He says, what do you mean? I need to pay? Yes, you need to pay. How many floors did you look at? You need to pay 10 rupees for every floor. Now there were 20 stories, isn't it? So he says, I only saw three floors. He says, okay, give me 30 rupees. The man took out 30 rupees and gave him. He still didn't understand what happened to him. When he went back to his friends that evening, they told him, how was your first day in the city? So he says, it went very well. I cheated someone of 170 rupees. He says, well, how did you do that? He says, I saw all 20 floors, but I only paid for three. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. You see, 
He is in a mess because he did not listen to advice. So sometimes the moral of it is we are in a mess because we did not listen to advice. People told you, they warned you, they told you everything, you did not listen. But still by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can retrieve that 30 rupees. Today we are laughing at someone who lost 30 rupees. We lose 300 rupees every day. And then what happens? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. May he grant us goodness. So the first point I'm saying is let's listen. Let's understand. If you're in a mess, depending on what the mess is, you need to ask yourself, is it a mess? Let me get back to the first point I made mention of. If you've lost a loved one and your life has suddenly come to a standstill, your son has passed away, your daughter has passed away, your husband, your someone, your wife, your mother-in-law. Well, in that case, some might say, Rahmatullahi alayha. You know? But sometimes what happens is you've lost a person who's so close to you and so dear. And you think to yourself, my life is at a standstill. My beloved brother, my beloved sister, that's not a mess. Your Iman is in a mess. That's what it is. We are the only religion who teaches wal qadri khayrihi wa sharrihi min Allahi ta'ala. Have you ever heard another religion teaching that good and bad fate needs to be surrendered to and we need to be pleased with it? No other faith teaches you in the depth that Islam does. So for that reason, remember, when you surrender to the law of Allah and you surrender to the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sometimes what you would have considered a mess is actually not a mess, but it is actually a point of your entry into Jannah through sabr. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Seek assistance through patience and through prayer. For indeed Allah is with those who bear patience. Allahu Akbar. Allah is with those who bear patience. You will find the assistance of Allah rushing in your direction because you are a person who had sabr. And sabr is such a great act of worship. People sometimes confuse a certain happening in their lives, a certain occurrence in their lives. They confuse it as being a mess, whereas all that is required of you is sabr. And Allah sometimes only allows those whom he loves to engage in sabr because he loves them. Because he says in the Quran, Indeed, Allah recompenses those who, has, who have engaged in sabr without limits. The reward of those who engage in sabr is limitless. It depends on you. You know if one man lost a child and another man lost a child of the same age, one might get a bigger reward than the other because he was closer to his child and he is feeling the loss more, but he is still thanking Allah, Ya Allah, if that was your decree, I'm not competing with you. If that's the case, look at how massive the reward one will get. Whereas the other, maybe he wasn't close to his child, maybe he did not live with his child, he will also have a reward, but perhaps not of that magnitude. Allahu Akbar. Then how can we look at the death of someone in our lives as a mess? Whereas it is an opportunity to earn paradise. This is why the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Inna Allah idha ahabba abdan ibtalahu. We've heard the hadith many times. When Allah loves someone, he tests him. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you, you're going to have problems in your life. Because life was not meant to be perfect. We did not come into this world in order to lead a perfect life. If that was the case, what then would be the value of paradise? Paradise, Allah created it to be perfect. So why would Allah create this life as well to be perfect? People would not want to go onto the other side. And you know what? It's very true. We have a sickness where those who think that we were born in order to lead the happiest and most blissful life ever, they have lost the plot. They haven't even understood that there was one creature of Allah whom Allah loved more than everybody and anybody else. Who is that creature? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
if leading the most blissful life was the best thing possible, he would have not had a single obstacle in his whole life. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So don't be fooled. The more difficulties you have, the more rejection you might face, the more issues you may face in your lives. Remember, it is an opportunity for you to look at it in a specific way and for you to understand it is actually looked at by others as a mess. But me as a Muslim, I look at it as an opportunity to get closer to my maker. Allahu Akbar. May Allah make us closer to him. So don't think in life there will be no car crash. In life, everything will be smooth and your health will never fail. In life, you will never lose someone who is dear to you in terms of death. You have to lose people because who is going to die first? That's the question. The question is not whether you are going to die or not. We know we're going to die. Who is going to die first? There is something known in the books of inheritance as al mawtul jama'i, which means collective death. Where many people die together, you hear the whole family perished. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. I was in Qatar, not just a few days ago. There was a huge fire in Qatar. Those of you who've been following the news. There were people who lost children, but I want to raise one point. The point is there was a couple that I don't know, but I read about. What happened to them? They had triplets. They had triplets, three children. You know what are triplets, inshallah? And they lost all three within the space of one morning. Imagine what they must have gone through. Imagine what type of mental, emotional trauma that they might have been facing and may still be facing. It is only belief in the secrets of your maker that would take you out of that type of distress. And it requires a true believer to actually sit and say, Alhamdulillahi ala kulli hal. Ya Allah, if that is what you wanted, then there it is. We will not compete with you. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lost his child, Ibrahim. And all his boys were lost in childhood or infancy. What did he say? He says, Indeed for Allah is what he has taken away. It always belonged to him. And for Allah is whatever he has given in the first place. It was always his. And everything that Allah has created, he has created with a fixed time. None can change that time. Amazing. So this is why we say, my beloved brothers and sisters, you've lost a loved one. Don't worry. Allah will recompense you. Bear patience. That patience is better for you. Allah knows what is good for you and what is not. But sometimes you have people who are clever jacks. You know what's a clever jack? As we said at the beginning, the Quran tells you something. We say, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger and his prophet, his slave. But still, we don't understand or we don't want to understand. And we, even if we do understand, we don't want to obey the instructions of those whom we claim to follow. If that's the case, who is to blame? Wallahi, we are to blame. So now you have Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informing you, telling you, if you do this and this, then your life will be this and that. And if you do that and this, then your life will be in that way. If you lead your life in a specific way, you will see happiness. If you lead your life in another way, you will see sadness. My beloved brothers and sisters, there is only one solution to everything, to return to what Allah and His Rasul have taught. That's the only solution. That's the only solution. Today, let's take a look at marital crises. What happens? You find a wife telling you, you know what? My husband is flirting. My husband is a womanizer. Or he is... What is going wrong there? They haven't understood khutbatul haja. What is khutbatul haja? That short sermon that is recited on a lot of occasions, including in most cases on the occasion of nikah. We hear it again and again. It has in it, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu taqullaha. Twice. And it has in it, Ya ayyuhalladheena 
الناس اتقوا ربكم once oh you who believe fear your rabb fear allah and oh people at large fear your rabb be conscious of your rabb the term taqwa be conscious of your maker if you are married and you are conscious of your maker what can go wrong what can go wrong nothing can go wrong you're conscious of your maker your salah is in order you're at home most of the time no flirting no nothing you can throw away your phone if it irritates everybody else but today what happens we on blackberry mashallah what's blackberry for your information it's crashing and this whatsapp and mix it and everything else poor wife is sitting right next to you looking at you so now what does she do she says okay i'll also go on whatsapp it's fine so she starts the two of you no discussion half the night is over and after that you sleep facing that direction she sleeps facing the other direction two in the morning beep beep have you heard that two in the morning and then if the wife had to say my darling i need a bit of water you're saying get it yourself and if the phone goes beep beep where's the phone we quickly replying who was that even if it was a jinn from africa you wouldn't know allahu akbar Allah protect us. Why is it now whose life is in a mess? What we are doing? I want to tell you what we are doing. You see the sisters? My sisters, don't be offended. I'm about to say something very practical. You see they have a book, mashallah, cuisine. You know, when we cook in the, in the kitchen, mashallah. So you have, alhamdulillah, the cakes, the gato that you'd like to make. Am I right? You'd like to have so many different things, le pain, and whatever else you'd like to make. Mashallah. And it needs to come out in a specific way. So what do you do? Let me see the book. Every single thing that it says there, let me buy it and purchase it, put it aside. Why? I don't want a mess. Am I right? Don't want a mess. I need to follow the ingredients. Then when I get all the ingredients, I need to mix it in a specific way. When I've mixed it in a specific way, I need to thicken it until it gets to a certain dough. If you're making a cake, for example. Then I preheat the oven. Why? Because that's what it says. And then I put it in and I watch. I know of some women, subhanallah, they will sit at the oven and watch it and wait for it. See, the sisters are laughing. Can you hear them? They know what I'm talking about. They sit and watch it. They check it. Too much pampering is also not good. Pamper your husband. Don't pamper the cake he's going to eat. Allahu Akbar. If you pamper your husband, and you haven't pampered the cake, he'll say, no problem, we'll buy one or you can make it again. But if you pampered the cake with no pampering the husband, even if it's the best cake, he won't even want to eat it. Allahu Akbar. You see the mess we're in. You see, we, things have gone upside down. Now the point I'm making is, we will follow the instruction to make a cake to the T so that nothing goes wrong with the cake. But we won't follow the instructions to lead my life properly so nothing goes wrong with my life. That we won't do. You see? This is why we say we're in a mess. You want help out of your mess. You need to read the book of ingredients known as Quran and Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and follow it properly just like you follow the ingredients of that Indian delight book. Yes. Jalebi. You know what's Jalebi? It's not everybody's business. Wallahi, they make it. It's quite difficult. I've seen it happening live. And sometimes it comes out of flop first few times. The women hide it to pretend like they didn't make it because they don't want you to see that something went wrong. There you are. Allahu Akbar. No foolish behavior. Sometimes thinking, talking of fools, there were two men who wanted to enter a parking lot in a high rise building. So what happened? The one man says, you know what? They won't allow us here unless we enter with vehicles. So you have to say you are somebody, you know, you have to say someone, say your name, that this is who I am and the guard will open. So the first man, he goes in. So the guard says, who are you? He says, I'm the director of electricity. He says, okay, he opened the boom, let him in. The moments later, the next man comes in. He didn't know what to say. The, the guard asked him, who are you? He says, I'm the director of electricity. The guard says, how can there be two directors of electricity? So this man was a quick thinker. He says, haven't you heard one for 110 volts and one for 220 volts? <laughs> so the guard says, okay, what a fool, what a fool. So we cannot be conned when you, you need to know what you want in life. You cannot be conned by other people. People will con you that, you know what, are you a Muslim? Well, there's a mandir. The Muslims go to the mandir. Is that true? The answer is no. You need to know a few items bare minimum. 
الأشياء they are known as معلوم من الدين بالضرورة there are certain items in your religion that you have to know yourself so nobody can fool you and tell you 110 volts and 220 volts they can't tell you that why because you know hey hey hang on electricity is electricity there you are Allahu Akbar so when I when I heard that for the first time I told myself I wish I was a god at least for one minute I would have at least caught someone lying May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. We need to be guards of our own deen, our religion. Sometimes we're in a mess because we have married two things that are not supposed to be married. You see, a man, what does he marry? He marries a woman, isn't it? Today on the globe, you have men marrying men in other countries. And you have women marrying women. They don't, they don't understand. Allahu Akbar. Someone told me, Someone actually told me that a member of their family had a sex change. Do you know what's a sex change? A woman decided to change and become a man. So she went and had the operation. And this is a true story. I'm not joking with you. She had an operation and she had her pills and whatever. And she had hormones. She grew a beard and she wanted to now be known as uncle instead of, you know, Mr. or Mrs. Meaning she wanted to be known as a specific term and so on. But believe me, I started reading about it because we need to guide people. We need to help them out of their mess, isn't it? And I started reading about it and I found something shocking just two nights back. What was shocking? Let me tell you what was shocking. 99%. Now I've added a bit more. It doesn't go up to 90, but I think the others are lying. So I'm putting it up to 99. 99% of those people who have done that, they're very sad and they live with regret. And they have so much inner emotional fighting that they are suicidal half the time. And when they get to old age, they are actually really people who are complete cabbage. Allah save God. Us. Why? Do you know what they were taught? People will come to you and tell you, you know, you're a woman, but in the wrong body. God made a mistake. This is what they are saying on the globe. God made a mistake and you are a woman, but in the wrong body. You're, you're in the body of a man. So change it. Do you know what I said to someone? I told them, it is better for you to be in what you think. This was a non-Muslim. It is better for you to be in what you think is the wrong body than to be competing with the maker of that body. It's easier to think, hey, you know, I've got masculine features, but I'm a feminine. Than to go forth and to fight with your own rub. Can you win the battle? You can't win the battle. This is why we say sometimes people have a lot of bad luck a lot of bad luck in their lives so what happened you suffered a loss there was a burglary there was a car accident there was a death everything happened one after the other you know what we say in our language someone did black magic on me straight away let me run to that peer and that maulana and that person because someone did magic on me and poor maulana he tells us yes there is a jinn that was sent to you by your family member it's a typical one Typical, typical classic. Believe me, it was not your family member. You are accusing an innocent person. Even if a religious man told you that it was that man, he has been lied to by the jinn. That's what it is. And if he had spoken to the jinn and told the jinn, do you know what? You are lying. The jinn will say, change the story. Change your story. And then if you still say you're lying, the jinn changes the story again and again. So this is why if you know the Quran, you will realize and understand that that man cannot tell you who exactly did what to you. And in most cases, it is not even black magic. It's just a spate of a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at Yusuf alayhi salam. Did he consider his life a mess? Never. But to us, it was the biggest mess. If we look at it with the eyes we have today. What happened to him? Young boy, his brothers were jealous of him. We are still fortunate when you're born, your brothers are still happy, mashallah. I hope they are, mashallah. You know, we don't want people to come up and say, hey, you know what, one more mouth to share here. One more mouth to share our money with, you know. We don't want that. I think, mashallah, people get happy. You play with your little brother, little sister. You're excited and so on. Then they were jealous. They planned to kill him. Then they, just, then they chased him away. They took him to a far off land. They put him into the pit. You know the story. After that, he was picked up as though he was going to be helped. He was not helped. He was sold. Look at the mess. If I was looking at it with my eyes or you with your eyes, and we took religion out of the equation for a moment, 
We would say this man's life was a big mess. But Allah said, Oh my worshipper, I have chosen for you such a high rank. The only way to get there is through X, Y, and Z. Allahu Akbar. If he was if there was no jealousy, they were not going to take him away. If they did not take him away, they were not going to put him in the pit. If he was not going to be in the pit, the people were not going to have picked him up. If the people had not picked him up, they were not going to sell him. If they didn't sell him, he wasn't going to go into that minister's home. If the wife didn't try tricks, he wasn't going to go into prison. Had he not gone into prison, he wouldn't have been able to translate the dreams. Had he not translated those dreams, he wouldn't have ever been mentioned by the king when the king saw a dream. Had the king had he not translated the dream of the king, he probably would have remained in that prison for however long. And had that not happened, he probably would have never ever ended up the minister of Egypt. Now whose life is a mess? Anyone wants to see? Is your life a mess? It's how you look at it in most cases. It's what you make of it in most cases. In some cases, it's a test on top of a test. But I want to warn you, in some cases, yes, it is a mess. I want to tell you on a lighter note, talking about a mess. There was a couple who could not speak English. So they went on a honeymoon to an English speaking country. And as the, the husband, you know, the, the groom now, he, he's going into the bathroom and he hears his bride scream the other side. Ah! So he says, what happened? She says, there is a rat here, you know, like a mouse here, mouse. This man is, now this is like a mess because you're on a honeymoon. You expect, you paid a five-star package. You're finding a rat in your, in your honeymoon suite. Imagine, imagine if you were two and there was a third in the room. Huh? There's, there's a third in the room. So this man phones, who should I phone? Let me phone housekeeping, housekeeping. He rings the number, housekeeping. Now he's got a big mess. What's the big mess? I can't speak. What do I say? The poor fellow, the only thing he knew were cartoons. He says, housekeeping. Housekeeping says, yes. He says, housekeeping. He says, yes. He's thinking, he says, you know, you know Tom and Jerry? You know Tom and Jerry? So housekeeping says, yes. He says, Jerry is here. <laughs> Jerry is here. Allahu <laughs> Akbar. That is a mess. That's a big mess. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. He should have chosen a place to go where at least he can communicate with them. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. See, they warned me about Mauritius. Mashallah, I think I'm getting the fever also. <laughs> so, well, the problem is sometimes we're in a real mess because we did not do anything to learn the Arabic language. Now, that's a serious point. Make an effort because sometimes when the push comes to shove, people can fool you, people can con you. We need to know. I want to ask you a question that you can answer in your own hearts. How many years are you Muslim for? Most of us, I think we were born Muslims. Am I right? How many years have you been reading Salah for? I think the bulk of us, inshallah, we've been reading Salah for quite a number of years, if not as many as possible. How many years do you know Surah Al-Fatiha since? Okay, perhaps 20, 30, 40, depending on our age. Who can recite for me the meaning of Surah Al-Fatiha just like that? Inshallah, there will be a number. There will be a number of us, I think, who can do that. But I want to take it one step further. The surahs that you have been reading in Salah all along that you know of by heart, how many of us have made an effort to try and understand what they mean? I think now the number becomes small. Am I right? So we laugh at someone who says Jerry is here, but we are saying Jerry is here every day because really we don't even know what's happening. We've got no clue. If we have to explain something, we can't do it. And that's our book. If I were to tell you, listen, brother, I will give you 50 million rupees if you study this language. Let me thumb suck. I give you a language, uh, Burmese. 50, who would learn it? I don't want you to put up your hands, but I think a lot of us would try. I think I would as well. To be honest with you, not a bad deal. We try our best. Wallahi, what we have, the happiness that you have, the deen that you have, the akhirah that you have, 
How much effort are we ready to make for that? It is worth much more than 50 million rupees. It's worth much more than anything we need in our lives here. The happiness of the Akhirah, the happiness in the dunya. Allah did not promise you that you will have material items in this world, but He promises you contentment. And that brings me to another point. Some people think they're in a mess because they don't have money. To be honest with you, you need to budget. You need to adjust your life downwards. Some people, when their salaries go down, they don't want to adjust their lives downwards because they're too used to living to a high life. So what they do, they go to the bank and get a loan. That itself, you are asking for trouble. I don't want to tell you who you are like. I've already given you examples. But you are asking for trouble on your own. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. We need to be alert. We need to be awake. We need to be people who are vigilant in the sense that whatever there is in terms of goodness to achieve for Allah's sake, we must be there first. You know, for money, we can do anything. I told you moments ago, 50 million. What is 50 million? One man deposited. In fact, there was a man. Every time he passes the bank midnight, he hoots loudly. because he, he sees the guard at the door of the bank. He sees the guard at the door of the bank. The guard is sitting on his chair and like, you know, like that. So he's hooting loud. And the guard wakes up and looks and the guy drives away. He did it one night, two nights, three nights, four nights, five nights. All he's, he keeps on doing this. So one day the guard says, I'm going to catch this man. So what he did, he got up as soon as the hooter was heard. He got up and he says, hey, what's your problem? And he stopped the vehicle and blocked it. So this man says, he opened the window. He says, why do you trouble me, disturb me every night? He says, hey, I have deposited my money in this bank. I don't want you to sleep. Look at how concerned he is. Obviously, it's on a lighter note. But he's so concerned, he doesn't know how the banks work. And he thinks this little guard here is going to, either if he sleeps, the thieves might come and take my money tomorrow. It won't be my account. That's what he thought. So he goes up and wake him up. How many people are worried about the real essence, which is the deen and the akhirah and jannah. And we can't even wake up for salatul fajr, let alone hooting at a guard in the middle of the night. When your alarm wakes you up for Fajr, sometimes we set it for 7 o'clock in the morning. We know Fajr is gone. So what's that? You are trying to make a cake with no sugar in it. That's what it is. And some of you might say, yeah, that's good. You know what? We make tea, meaning a cake without sugar because of the diabetes. Some people say that. Yes. So let's take it further. How can you bake without flour and without the baking powder or the yeast, whatever you are using, depending on it? And without the eggs, if they are there, and so on. How can you do that? You wouldn't, isn't it? You would follow the ingredient. So why then don't we realize and understand? If I were to take, for example, an egg and put it into the ingredients of some recipe that has no eggs in it, I am asking for trouble. It's going to flop. So what am I doing in my life? Allah says, here's the ingredient for happiness. You won't be in a mess if you... Stay away from adultery, stay away from gambling, stay away from evil, stay away from falsehood and gossip. Watch your tongue. Stay away from wasting money. People are in a mess because of their tongues. A lot of mess is because of your tongue. You asked for it yourself. Its size is very small, but its crime is very big. A tongue that cut, it's deeper than the cut of a knife. Because the cut of the knife can heal. The cut of the tongue destroys even the best of relations. So be careful. We're in a mess. Why? Because we followed a path that was a different path from the path of success. We followed the path of the mess. So here we are. So the moral of it is don't. Don't follow the path of mess from day one. And if you are already in it, then your way out is repentance and tawbah and coming back to the path. That's the way. Keep your tongue constantly wet with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep your mind constantly fresh with the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your maker and you are answerable to him. That's what you need to know. Then what will happen? You won't be in a mess, inshallah. And make dua to Allah. Constantly ask Allah. There is a small group of people who might be in a mess because of other people. Sometimes you're in a mess because of someone else. 
Well, you need to pick up the pieces and carry on. Sometimes a person suffers a divorce. Sometimes a person suffers something due to someone else. They robbed you of your money. Now it's a mess. But remember, you need to get up, count your losses, proceed in the name of Allah, continue, try again. I always tell people, you know, when you write your examinations, I don't know in this country, do you have a British system perhaps where you write O-levels? So when you write your O-levels, what happens? You fail first time. What do you do? Give up. No. Write again. Sometimes if people get C or B, they want an A, they'll write again. You fail, you write again. You fail again, you write a third time. And after that, you pass. When you pass, you go to A level. You pass, you go to university. You come out a doctor. If you had given up the first time you failed, perhaps you'd have never gone anywhere. So don't give up. Keep on trying in the name of Allah. No matter what it is. I've given you an example of examinations. But in life, there are certain things. In business, you might fail once. You started your own business, it was a loss. Well, why did you lose? If you know why you lost, then close that door properly and try again. If you don't know why you lost, go and find a job and be employed by someone so that you don't lose. Some people are created to be employed by people and not to have their own businesses. Because sometimes you have a man who doesn't understand what is capital. If you don't know what's the capital in your business, you, you need to work for someone and get a salary, please. Because you will eat into your capital and before you know it, your business has flopped and you're in a big mess. But you didn't realize that it was your own doing that resulted in that particular mess. And this is why even in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he speaks about how important it is for us to concentrate on our own matters. Instead of leading ourselves to the path of destruction by worrying about other people in a negative way. You know, when you're worried about your brother who is poor, that's a good worry if you're going to give him wealth. But when you're worried about someone who is committing adultery, if you want to help him, it's a good concern. But if you want to spread his tail, it's a very bad concern. Leave it. It doesn't concern you. If you want to help him, you can guide him in a positive way. But if you want to backbite about him, forget. Min husni islam il mar'i tarkuhu ma la ya'ni. One of the signs of a good Muslim is that he leaves that which does not concern him. Which means if you leave what does not concern you, you will be bothered about what concerns you. And in that particular case, will you lead yourself into the path of destruction and leading yourself into the path of a mess? The answer is no, because I'm worried about myself. So we need to constantly make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our doors at all times and love for your brethren what you love for yourself. If you don't like to people to spread rumor about you, be careful. Don't spread rumor about someone else. Like we said moments ago, people don't realize the effect, the evil effect of their evil deeds. Sometimes we, when we engage in sin, then the barakah or the blessings from our sustenance is snatched away. A person, a man can lose some of his sustenance because of a sin that he is not leaving. And that is a common sense statement because say for example you have a mistress. So you have a wife, then you have a mistress. That is the ingredient of a mess. The explosion is coming. It's coming. The day you started it, there's going to be an ending. It's not going to last forever. No one's has lasted forever. Very few people have taken their mistresses to their graves. Very few. Very few. And even then, the mistress will come up and say, well, I was with your husband for 20 years. So instead of you saying, Ya Allah, forgive him, you say, Ya Allah, I thank you for taking him away. Big mess. Allah protect us. I hope there's nothing of that nature. Let me tell you. We start some haram relation. You know what it does to us? Wallahi, we pay for it. Wallahi, we pay for it. It has to have an effect. Because we're, we're choosing a path. If you have a path, the M1 from here to the airport, and somewhere you're now heading onto a side road, where are you going to go? Are you going to go to the airport? The answer is never. Because you chose another path. You chose another path. 
which is leading in another direction. If you quickly come back, you cut your losses and you quickly return back to the path and you're going back to the airport. If not, not only you missed your flight, but you don't even know where you're heading. So there is a path to happiness, a path to goodness and a path to paradise. When the minute you start a wrong relation somewhere, you have diverted. You will not come to that path unless you count your losses, seek forgiveness and get back onto it, inshallah, leave whatever bad it was. If not, that costs more money than your legal wife. Remember that. Why? Your legal wife, mashallah, she cooks for you. She's at home and everything happens. You know, your children are there. There, you're paying rent. I want to stay in five star. You stay in that area there. And where are you eating? Oh, I don't have time. Oh, we'll eat out. Don't worry. So what you spend for food one month in your proper home, that goes in one day here. And then what happens? Let me show you the effect of a mess. You come to your legitimate home where they haven't even spent your money much. They are so calm and relaxed. You get so angry for any small thing that happens in the house. Why? Because your money is going there. That's why. So from there, you say, hi darling, how are you? And when you come to your real wife, what happens? Why is this like this? You haven't yet done this. Why are the children not in bed? Why is this? Why? Because you can't do that that side. That's the reason. Do you know the joke? Some of you might have heard it. One of my talks where there was a man, so, the soft natured man. You might have heard it. See, they are nodding. So inshallah, those nodding can tell those who are shaking their heads inshallah later on. <laughs> they say this man was very soft natured. They told him if you're getting married to this woman, she's quite difficult. So rather, you know, you show her your authority the first day. You know, I was in Malaysia. Those of you who do know and someone emailed me to tell me, one of the sisters actually emailed me to tell me, you shouldn't have killed that cat. So let's not kill it today, inshallah. So what happened? The brothers suggested to this man to say, you know what, with the first day you get married, you will go into the room. Your, your bride will be there. We will have a cat in the room. Now, no one likes a third party. I told you that. You, the bride and the groom, you don't want a third party there. So when the cat emerges from the bed, underneath the bed, you must get so angry, we will have a stick there, you start beating that cat. So, and after you get rid of that cat, your story will be over. The woman will understand, this man is someone whom you don't mess with. You don't mess with. So now what happened? Everything worked per plan. Per plan, mashallah. The cat came out, and the man got angry. Artificial anger, obviously. And he picked up the stick and he began to beat this cat and he let the cat out. Okay, we change the rewire slightly. Can you hear that? So, and he let the cat out. So what happened? The woman was frightened. Yo, this man, I heard he was soft natured. Look at this. Hey. So the man said, no, don't worry. It's okay. Every day in the morning he says, hey, you have my tea ready or else. And he says, she says, no, 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 don't worry. I have it ready. And you do this, you wash my clothes by 12 o'clock or else, no, 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 I'll have it ready at 12 o'clock, don't worry, it's there. Because she's worried, I know what happened to the cat. So she complained to her friends one day that you people told me this man was soft-natured. He's one a very difficult man. He, he can beat the hell out of you. So the friend said, no, call his bluff. Call his bluff, meaning try him out one of the days. Defy, see. My sisters, I'm not calling on you to defy, please. <laughs> So now, this man says, you're going to have the tea ready by 7 o'clock or else. So the woman says, or else what? Or else I'll have it ready. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. You see, this is, this is what we're talking about. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us humility and humbleness. We lose our temper sometimes. Obviously, the moral is slightly different from the story. I just mentioned it because it came to my mind. But... We lose our temper sometimes with people we're not supposed to be losing it with because we have already bubbled the mess somewhere else. How many men are guilty of going to work and something happens there because you cannot vent your frustration with your boss, you come home and vent it on someone else who is innocent. If our children are paying for the frustration we have somewhere else, wallahi, we are creating two messes out of one. Because now your children's minds will be messed. 
And as they are growing up, they will be in a big mess. Dad is a person you can't talk to him. Dad is never here, number one. Number two is when he is, he's never happy. He's always in a bad mood. Why? You are creating a mess for your own children and your family. Sometimes parents come and say, you know, my son is on drugs. My daughter's on drugs. And, and I sit sometimes and I ask him, how often or how regularly do you have a meal with your child? Do you have a meal or two meals a day? How much time do you spend with your children? How many times have you embraced your own children? And how many times have you told them you love them? And how many times you, have you told them you really, really miss them? And how many times have you bought them some gifts or surprises and just surprised them and given them something, even if it was light? And how many times have you made them feel like they are the most important people in this world? And a lot of the times, those whose children are astray, are guilty of being busy, doing something else, not realizing it's about time you looked after your children. Now the mess, who created it? I wouldn't like to say we created it ourselves, but I'm sure we are to blame as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our children from smoking to start with. See, I heard the Amin before I said smoking. Once I said smoking, where's the Amin? Say it loudly, Amin. Why? Because Yes, there might be people who are smoking and so on. We all know that it's something bad, very bad. But at the same time, you don't want it for your children. Believe me. It's too bad to want it for your children. So if you are a role model for your own children, you are saving them from a mess. So when they say, when, when they grow older, they won't even need to say, help me out of my mess because you already helped them out of their mess before they were in the mess. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us out of our mess. Believe me, when you don't read salah, you pay for it. You pay for it. How? Something will happen. It has to happen. If you don't want to dress appropriately, don't think you can defy Rabbul Alameen. That is Rabbul Alameen. You know, the other day I was speaking about Surah Al-Rahman and a valid point came to my mind. All of us know one verse from Surah Al-Rahman off by heart. What is it? You said it. And a lot of us would know what it means. Which is it of the favors of your Lord? O mankind and jinn kind, do you deny? What's the answer? We don't deny anything, Ya Rabbi. But the answer is not good enough verbally. You need to display that answer in your actions. When you don't want to dress properly, you are saying, Ya Allah, you've given me this, you've given me that. Don't worry, I'm denying all of that. I can still dress how I want. Allah says, my worshiper, do you want to pay for it? Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. May Allah make us from those who can dress appropriately. It's not difficult. Believe me, there are new Muslims, reverts, who are, who are dressing properly against all odds and we born Muslims we don't want to dress properly so Allah says in the Quran if you want to turn away we will replace you with others who won't be like you they will do what we want them to do not like you so don't think you're doing Allah a favor. You're doing yourself a favor. Like I said, if you're not reading Salah, there are 10 other people who will start reading Salah because you've left it. Don't think Allah needs that from you. But the biggest problem is, then we cry when we are in a mess. Because we never ever turned to Allah. وَإِذَا أَنْعَمْنَا عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ أَعْرَضَ وَنَآ بِجَانِبِهِ وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرُّ كَانَ يَأُوسَى In another verse Allah says وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرُّ فَذُو دُعَاءٍ عَرِيضٍ Allah says Man, when we give him goodness and we make his life easy he turns away and lies on his side he turns away from us sometimes. And when we inflict him with something, he makes a broad dua. You know what's a broad dua? A broad dua, some of you might have seen it in the masjid. You know, people make dua like this, right? Some people make like this. Have you seen it? 
Some people make like this. Have you seen it? Then you get the uncle saying, Ya Allah. Hey, he's got a big problem. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allah grant us ease. No, it's not the size of the problem. Obviously, people think that when you've got a big problem, you, you know, you get more. No. That's, you, where, you, where your hands are doesn't mean broad or short. But people begin to cry. But brother, my sister, did it need Allah to inflict you with harm before you turned to him? Is that what was needed? Well, if he loves you, he'll do that for you. I hope you understood the question. Let me ask it again in a different way. Are we going to wait for something bad to happen in our lives before we turn to Allah, start dressing properly, start reading our salah, start, we, we stop gossip and stop backbiting, or will we wait for the day when Allah gives us two smacks on our faces and then we're going to turn? What are we waiting for? Sometimes we are, our life is too easy, too easy, so we don't turn to Allah. That is the time you must turn to Allah. You know the hadith. The Prophet ﷺ says, Ta'arraf ila Allahi fi rakhai ya'rifka fi shidda. Get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in times of ease. And He will get close to you in times of difficulty. Why do we have to wait for times to become difficult? Then we say, Ya Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. But still, if difficulty has already come in our path, it's not too late. Turn to Allah. Be happy with the decree of Allah. Remember one golden rule. You will never ever have whatever you want in this life. Remember that. Life never ever goes as you plan it. It doesn't. Anta turidu, wallahu yuridu, wallahu yaf'alu ma yuridu. You want, and Allah wants, and Allah does what he wants because what he wants overrides what you want and all the time what Allah wants is better than what you want you think it's something minor but Allah has something better for you like I started I end and I want to bring back the example of the death sometimes you've lost a loved one and to you ya Allah why did you do this to me don't ever say that why bear sabr silently you can shed tears you make dua you ask allah to grant them forgiveness the biggest gift you can give a deceased person is the simplest but people don't understand that what is the biggest gift you can give someone who's passed away to make dua for them that's the biggest gift you can ever give them and then imagine if you had to come on the day of qiyamah and allah says my worshiper for you is paradise only because we took your child away and you were patient when we saw that patience today we don't want to take reckoning of any other deeds just enter paradise Allahu Akbar. wasn't that cheap and when you enter paradise who do you see your child is there Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. so this is why remember Allah's plan we don't understand it because our brains are still so small Allah says وَمَا أُوتِيتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا You have not been granted knowledge except a little bit of it. A little droplet of it. We don't, we might have arrived at the moon. We might have technology that will take us to wherever we want. We might have Bluetooth and wireless. And very soon we might have yellow teeth and green teeth. One wonders. It will come. But still, man doesn't understand the basics. The basics. He cannot see into the future. Allahu Akbar. And over and above that, man cannot even explain to you from a medical perspective what sleep and dreams are all about. A dream. Tell a doctor to explain to you. He'll give you something. But it's not the deep explanation. Allah has left certain things beyond our understanding. I was reading an article last night in Johannesburg of how a certain professor, French professor, looked at the Pharaoh. You know the Pharaoh, the Fir'aun, who is preserved. They say it was Ramses II, Allah knows best. So 
he had seen how this defies everything scientific. How is this body not rotting? You see, Allah knows best. It went into the sea, isn't it? The Quran is the only scripture that says that the body came out and Allah will preserve it. Allah says in the Quran, On this day, we shall take that body out and preserve it so that it can remain as an example for those who come after you. This means the Pharaoh. He used to say, I'm God. Today, look at him. Little mummy. I don't even know why they don't call them daddies. They call them mummies. When I first heard the word mummy and I was young, I was wondering, what will it be? Were these leaders all women? Mummy. Allahu Akbar. Anyway, those daddies. So, look at him, helpless. Skin is still there. Some of it peeled off, but it's still there. But it's not rotting. Now, whether it is the salt content from the ocean or something else, Allah knows best. But people have accepted Islam by studying that preserved body and looking at what the Quran says. People have accepted Islam. We have the deen in front of us. Why do we find ourselves still finding it difficult to adopt one or two things there? For what? Come on, it's about time. You know, I always tell people, you really want to turn? What are you waiting for? Who do you want to come and talk to you? Say his name, I'll bring him. Who do you want to come and talk to you? If we bring him, will you turn? If the answer is yes, bring him. You can bring him or we'll fly you to him, wherever he is. Then will you turn? Wallahi, it's just a cheap excuse. Let me tell you. And I'll end with this, inshallah. You see why people are in a mess. People are in a mess when they are reminded constantly, but they still don't take heed. So you're reminded once, you see it, you, you, you don't want to come. You're reminded twice, you see it, you don't want to come. You're reminded thrice, you see it, you don't want to come. And so on. Then listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam. Nuh alayhi salam, the Prophet Noah, may peace be upon him, called his people towards worshipping Allah for 950 years. And he lived with them for even longer than that. Then there came a time when he saw that, Ya Allah, these people, imagine in 950 years, just a handful of them accepted, just a handful, accepted the message. So what did he say? رَبِّ لَا تَذَرْ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ دَيَّارًا Allahu Akbar. Oh Allah, destroy all of these people. Don't even leave one of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded the call. So when you're in a big mess, ask yourself, have I ever harmed a friend of Allah? Have I ever spoken bad about some ulama who are working in the field? Have I ever engaged negatively in the life of someone innocent? If that's the case, maybe you're paying. Have I ever cheated people out of zakat? Have I ever miscalculated or not paid my zakat? If that's the case, maybe you're paying. You see, maybe you're paying. So when, when you have a problem, people will come to you and say, brother, don't worry, bear sabr, bear sabr. You know, it's a means of elevation. Don't worry, it's a means of you going closer to Allah. Nobody will come and say, brother, you know what? Ask yourself, have you paid your zakat? Did you make enemies with these people who are serving Allah's cause? Have you sworn people behind their backs? What have you done? Tell us. Are you, not, are you committing adultery and you don't want to leave it? What's the story? Are you a person who goes to the clubs and casinos? Are you a person who engages in the drinking of alcohol? Are you a per Why? Because these things also, Allah gives us a good hiding, literally. He gives us a beating. Because sometimes we engage in this type of thing in order to get us out of it. Nobody's going to come and tell you that. Look at what happened to Nuh alayhi salatu was salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to his call in such a way that Allah says, look, the quota, I'm wording it in my own words, then I'll read the verse. The quota of the number of times that it was written for them to receive a warning is over. Now they will not turn. None of them will turn. So stop calling them. That's what Allah told Nuh.
وأوحي إلى نوح أنه لن يؤمن من قومك إلا من قد آمن فلا تبتئس بما كانوا يفعلون Allah says we reveal to Nuh alayhi salam that now nobody knew is going to believe whoever believed believed whoever disbelieved shall remain disbelievers so stop calling them just leave them ignore them and forget about what they're doing you start building your ark have you ever thought for a moment what that means that is a very serious verse it means Allah has written how many times you and I are going to be warned after my quota is over and yours it stops it's not going to come after that in my predestiny and yours if it was written that you are going to get 3,578 messages and after that you'll die either this way or that way if you have turned within the 3,000 messages you are lucky if not you are doomed do you see my point so why I say this is sometimes we love lectures we love to listen to this person and that person but what did you do about it did your life change well if it didn't we wasted our time and so did everybody else may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us from those who've wasted their time because the minimum inshallah is Allah will reward us and I'd like to hope that everybody who is here we are here with the, the softened part of our hearts to listen to a good word because we want to come out of our mess the way to come out of your mess is before you die turn to Allah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors and grant us goodness inshallah until we meet again tomorrow evening we say wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina muhammad wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh subhanallahi bihamdihi subhanakallahumma bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk